Now let us look at this simplified subtenons parabol bar technique, which we are doing in the pre-op area, usually under sodium pentacol sedation. Notice that a wire speculum has been inserted for better exposure. Here we see the PSI ICO subtenons needle, which is now ready to penetrate conjunctiva and tenons in a tangential plane about 10 millimeters from the limbus in the infrotemporal quadrant. The needle easily passes around the globe until the hub of the needle touches the conjunctiva. Usually four cc's of anesthetic will be injected. Note that there is some parabulbar spread superiorly leading to a mild amount of chemosis. If too much chemosis occurs, then only three to three and a half cc's will be injected. For this first case, there was only a minimal amount of chemosis and four cc's of the mixture was given. After the speculum is removed, a couple of drops of betadine 5% solution are instilled onto the eye. The lids are swabbed with betadine 10% solution. A patch is placed over the eye and a Honan's balloon is placed over the patch. Approximately five to seven minutes after the injection sequence has been completed and the Honan's balloon placed, the patient is brought back to the operating room. Some additional digital massage is done for about five minutes to further decompress the orbit. Notice that we have achieved excellent akinesia. There is essentially no movement of the right eye up, down, right, or left. Also notice that we have achieved a lid block as well, just from the subtenons injection. In this second case, which is a right eye as the first case was, we are again in the holding area and sodium pentothal has been given. Notice the placement of the needle infrotemporally about 10 millimeters from the limbus and the tangential passage of the needle around the globe. As the anesthetic is being injected, there is parabulbar spread, especially evident superiorly, supratemporally, and temporally. In this patient, as you will see, only three cc's of the anesthetic was injected since there was sufficient parabulbar spread. As was done in the first patient, betadine 5% solution is instilled onto the eye. Betadine 10% solution is swabbed over the lids and a patch and Honan's balloon not shown here will have been placed. Now we are in the OR about 10 minutes later. The patient is brought back from the holding area to the OR as mentioned before very quickly. The Honan's balloon has been removed and additional digital massage done. The instruments at this point are just about ready to be taken from the autoclave. So there is no actual delay in getting the next case started when you're using only one room. As you can see, this patient has achieved an excellent block with good akinesia and no right eye movement, right, left, up, or down. Also, there is only insignificant residual chemosis and a nice lid block has occurred as well, entirely from the subtenons injection. In case three, which is a left eye, again note the position of the needle tip infrotemporally about 10 millimeters from the limbus. And notice how easily the needle passes tangentially around the globe. Because of the mildly blunted tip, the bevel placement on the inside of the curve giving a bevel down effect, the direct visualization of the process, and the tangential passage, one should have no fear of penetration of the globe. There really is a very nice feel to this. As the anesthetic is injected, notice the somewhat moderate parabulbar spread, inferiorly, temporally, and superiorly. This is quite common and is easily dissipated with the Honan's balloon and some digital massage. 
the betadine installation, the betadine swab of the lids, the patch, and Honan's balloon placement take place in routine fashion. The patient is rather quickly brought back to the operating room and additional digital massage done. Again, we see that excellent akinesia has been achieved with no movement, right, left, up, or down. And a nice lid block has also occurred entirely from the subtenon's injection. In this fourth case, which is another left eye, the needle is positioned, as always, in temporally about 10 millimeters from the limbus, just before the bulbar conjunctiva reaches the fornix. Mild parabulbar spread is seen in temporally and supratemporally and imperially as the anesthetic is injected. This will be easily dissipated as shown previously with the Honan's balloon and digital massage. This needle tip, as it was passed, was a little too dull and did not penetrate conjunctiva and tenons as easily as it should have. In fact, if a needle tip is too dull, just change it for another needle. My basic recommendation is not to push against resistance ever, since the needle should easily penetrate conjunctiva and tenons and pass very easily around the globe. Betadine installation of 5% betadine, swabbing of the lids and placement of the patch, and Honan's balloon placement are done in the usual way. Here we are again, in the OR about 10 minutes later, some additional digital massage has been done. Again, notice that we have achieved excellent akinesia. And a fairly good lid block has taken place, again, just from the subtenon's injection. This fifth case is for demonstration purposes and shows the injection purposely of a greater than needed volume of anesthetic, causing a fairly significant amount of conjunctival chemosis to occur as you will now see. This should not cause any concern because with the use of the Honan's balloon and digital massage, very little residual chemosis will remain. I generally stop injecting once somewhat moderate parabulbar spread has occurred, if less than 4 cc's. Otherwise, if only a small amount of chemosis occurs, 4 cc's of the anesthetic mixture will be given. The patient is now in the OR. Betadine application in the Honan's balloon and digital massage has already taken place. Again, we have excellent akinesia with no movement right, left, up, or down. Notice that only a mild amount of conjunctival chemosis remains. On close-up, with the lids widely separated, the residual chemosis is barely noticeable. This last case is just to demonstrate control of conjunctival bleeding if it should occur. A wet-filled cautery is always kept at the bedside in the holding area, but surprisingly is rarely needed as conjunctival bleeding is very infrequent. But when bleeding does occur, I will apply cautery to stop the bleeding and to keep these eyes looking white on post-op day number one. As seen after removal of the Honan's balloon, the conjunctival bleeding has been completely controlled. Let me now take a few moments to show what a few of these patients almost always look like on the first post-op day. This patient is post-op day number one for the right eye, which had a temporal clear corneal incision. He has no bruising. There is no lid ecchymosis or conjunctival injection or hemorrhage, just as if he had had topical anesthesia. This next patient is post-op day number one for the left eye. Again, there is no bruising. There is no lid ecchymosis or conjunctival injection or hemorrhage. 
He had a temporal clear corneal left eye. In the four years that I have been doing this anesthesia technique, there have been zero cases of lid ecchymoses from the simplified subtenons type block. This third patient is post-op day number one for the right eye. He too looks like he must have had topical anesthesia. So it is difficult to determine which eye had the surgery. But he also had the simplified subtenons block. This final post-op patient to be seen is post-op day number one right eye. He shows some mild temporal conjunctival injection, but again, there is no lid ecchymosis or lid edema, and he hardly looks like he had had cataract surgery on the previous day.